same day and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at the pretty village of Selborne in Hampshire. It's about four miles or so to the southeast of Alton, just inside the South Downs National Park. And today we're going to be doing a roughly four and a half mile sort of figure of eight route starting and finishing in the village. Initially we'll be heading uh, south up the iconic zigzag path towards Selborne Common along the Selborne Hangar and then down back into the village we'll have a look at a few things in there before heading north through some wonderful meadows out to the site of an old priory and then back to our original starting point. I can promise you some quite extraordinary views. I think this is one of the prettiest walks that uh, we've done in the series. Now I'm filming, as you can see I'm squinting in the sun, it's a glorious sunny morning, filming right at the beginning of June, uh, well I'll, there's hardly a cloud in the sky, blue, sun's out, temperature's going to be superb, perfect for walking. Are we ready? Let's go. Well I've parked my car at a free car park directly behind the Selborne Arms pub uh, in the high street. Well, initially we're going to start heading southwards, slightly uphill towards the zigzag path. We're about to undertake our first challenge of the walk to uh, climb up zigzag path. And a nice little shaded area at the moment uh, which is just as well because it's already quite warm. Now there's a little information board just by me here. Um, so right we've parked the car park there, we've walked up here, we're now going to go up the zigzag path here and then we're going to head along in a sort of westerly direction through Selborne Hangar, some beautiful woods. Then we're going to make our way downhill again back um, through the village. We'll have a quick look at the high street, a lot of few things to look there. Look at the church and then we're going to make our way northwards through these beautiful meadows, through some woodland, um, some lakes and there's a ruins of an old abbey I believe round about here and then we come back through a path this way on our return journey. Okay, are we ready for this? Let's go. The start of the zigzag path I believe there are something like 20 zigs and zags. And one day I must find out what the difference is between a, a zig and a zag. Well, there's another little information board here that tells us that the path was cut by Gilbert White and his brother in 1753. Well I'll tell you a little bit more about uh, Gilbert White, who he is and his background when we get to the top of the hill because uh, he's quite an important part in the village history. Oh, we must be nearly halfway, oh yes here we go, a bench. And already we've got a, a rather pleasant view for part of the village and then the surrounding hills and landscape from here. Isn't that beautiful? And no doubt we're going to get an even better view when we get to the very top. Well I've completely lost count for the number of zigs and zags. All I know is we're well over halfway we must be getting close to the top now as we uh, slowly wind our way up. It's actually quite good fun as well. And uh, aha, here we go. This must be here. Yeah, I can see the bench at the very, very top. Beautiful. So, Hopefully we're going to get some cracking views up here 
looking down below. Isn't that beautiful? Now those golf ball like objects in the far distance, I was reading somewhere belong to I think it's Astrium Services and they're part of a communication system involving a fleet of Skynet satellites and it's basically a, a legacy of um, NATO spacecraft. Well let me tell you a little bit about Gilbert White, the uh, well-known naturalist uh, who was around in the 18th century. His grandfather was the vicar here and indeed Gilbert was born in the vicarage next to the church. The family home uh, was the Wakes in the High Street and we'll be having a look at that uh, when we uh, pass through the village later on in the walk. Now Gilbert was probably best known for his book uh, The Natural History and Antiquities of Selborne I've got a copy myself. It's sometimes uh, published under the title The Natural History of Selborne. It was uh, first published, according to the notes on the back here, in 1789 by his brother Benjamin. And it's been uh, continuously in print since then with nearly 300 editions up to uh, 2007. It's a fascinating book though. It's basically a series of letters and writings to uh, other botanists and uh, naturalists with his findings and amongst other things he was uh, responsible for identifying the humble harvest mouse in uh, 1767, the smallest rodent in the UK. Now he was uh, basically uh, thought of as being uh, England's first ever ecologist and indeed Charles Darwin was uh, asked in 1870 about what books had inspired him and he mentioned White's writings. I should also mention a little bit about uh, the Wakes house because not only is it now a museum uh, to him but also it contains the Oates Museum and it comprises an exhibition relating to Captain Lawrence Oates who died in Scott's ill-fated expedition to the South Pole in 1912. Well I could sit at this bench and uh, look out over this quite glorious view for ages, but we need to uh, to kick on. Now, right next to the bench is this uh, stone, I think it's a sarsen stone, and it was put here by Gilbert White and it's known as the wishing stone. Now the big question is, if I make a wish, will it work? Well, I'll let you know if my numbers come up in the lottery tonight. <laughs> now, we're now going to head westwards through Selborne Hanger. Hanger basically means a, a wooded area, and this one's well known for beech trees. <laughs> making our way through Selborne Hangar and a little bench usually a good indication that there's a good view and yes look at this almost looks like a picture postcard scene doesn't it with the sort of trees as your frame and then the eye gets drawn through to the village down below absolutely gorgeous I've had a really enjoyable little stroll uh, along the hangar. We're now going to start dropping back uh, down into the village. Just behind me here is uh, Selborne Common, uh, about 246 acres, I believe, all uh, owned by the National Trust. And I believe Selborne Hill at uh, 692 foot, something like that, is one of the highest points in Hampshire. This is a lovely sight of the 
sailborne hangar from the, the bottom just before we head into the outskirts of the village. Just standing and taking this quite exquisite view in. Well, as we come into the village, there are so many wonderful houses and cottages with their individual characteristics to look out for. So this one on my left, I believe is part of a, well, a series of buildings that make one giant building called Fisher's, or originally called Fisher's Cottages or Fisher's Building. And originally in the 17th century, it was a, a timber framed farmhouse that uh, was converted to the poor house in the, the late 1700s. But it's now uh, four homes in total. Oh, look at this one here. Now, when I win the lottery, <laughs> isn't that beautiful? Pair of uh, semi detached cottages. I see there's a date up there, 1793, called uh, Searle View. Uh, Searle is the name of the little river or stream opposite. Oh, look at this one here. <laughs> and the ducks at the, the top. Brilliant. Okay, so we're on the uh, heading into the village now. We'll have a look at the church, the village green and a little wander on the high street before we start going back into the countryside. And this is the church of St Mary's, built on the site of an earlier Saxon building. The present church with its Norman tower and nave dates from 1180. The north aisle was added in the 14th century. An old church was greatly restored in the mid 19th century but there are lots of little interesting aspects to look at when uh, you come to visit this church. Well, just to the side of the church, close to the porch, well, that building there is the old vicarage. And there in front of me, uh, the remains, or a stump, of a yew tree. It was a magnificent specimen when it was uh, alive. I think it was 12 to 1400 years old when sadly it got blown down in a gale on the 25th of January 1990. Indeed there's a memorial plaque on the wall. Now although the um, stump and tree is dead I believe they managed to get a, a little sapling or a clone of it and yes look this little bit here by the side is a bit of you gradually growing. The rest of this vegetation has got nothing to do with a tree. I think it's a sort of honeysuckle, I'm not 100% sure. And then just in front of the tree there's this sort of strange looking uh, um, block with the word trumpeter written on it and it marks the grave of a village trumpeter called John Newland and he was notorious in the 19th century for calling out the men of the village when a fight with the men from Alton was threatening and encouraged them by blowing his trumpet. The other thing to look at <laughs> on the, uh, what, let's see, this must be the western side on the tower, is to look at the clock, which is quite unusual. It's um, one of the oldest in Hampshire, dating from 1678, but you'll notice it's only actually got one hand. Now, according to my watch, it's 20 past eight in the morning. Okay, just trying to work this out. So it's the slightly larger hand probably is the one to look out for. I imagine trying to read this clock from a distance will be quite a challenge. But a magnificent tower, what's that, 1781, it's got written on the top. And I believe the tower has got six bells. Now the grave of Gilbert White here in the churchyard normally would be difficult to find had it not been for this very helpful little sign that they have here. There we go, to the grave of Gilbert White. So hopefully if we follow this little moan path we should find it. It's not a, a particularly grand grave which is what um, Gilbert White wanted but here it is yes. 
Gilbert White, 1720 to uh, 1793. Now, unfortunately, I can't go into the, the church, but there are two magnificent uh, stained glass windows that are connected to uh, Gilbert White. One, which was made in 1920, depicts St Francis preaching to birds and shows at least 64 kinds of birds mentioned by Gilbert White in his writings. The other one was made in 1993 and shows foxes, rabbits, a tortoise and a hedgehog amongst many other animals. Well right next to the church is this sweet little village green known as the Plester or Play Place. In 1271 the land was granted to have a market on it and it's a former play area for, for children. There's two magnificent trees. There's a, an oak tree just here on my right that was planted to commemorate Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee and then just a little bit further along there's a, I think it's a sycamore planted here on the green by um, Gilbert White's brother. It really is a pretty little spot. What have we got here on the left? East Plester Cottage with the honeysuckle and uh, a bit of wisteria as well down there. Oh so pretty. So it's a shame there's a very busy road that goes through the village. B006. Now this is the Selborne Arms, originally a timber frame building now hidden by stone cladding. It dates from the 1600s and it's had many alterations over the centuries. Pebble Dash was added in the 20th century. It was a farmhouse until 1878 when it had a malting shed and it was described as a beer house in 1878. Now, uh, over the road there is the uh, Queen's Hotel, originally a 16th century coaching inn, formerly known as the Compasses. Sadly, it closed in 2015. There are plans for a, a five home development there, I believe. Well, this beautiful thatched property on the left. It really is quite a gorgeous little street. and. Uh, what are these lime trees along the, the side? I think so. Well here in the high street is the Wakes, a 16th century building. The Wakes family originally lived here and then Gilbert White's grandfather bought it at the start of the 18th century as a dower house for his wife. After the death of his father in 1758, Gilbert inherited it in 1763 and it's been extended over the years and as you can see there's some magnificent lime trees in the front of it. Well opposite uh, the wakes is Plester House as you can see there's a blue plaque in front of it. Now I'll just let you read it and take it in. It's a fake erected to fool tourists as you can see Sullivan, Black, same date of birth and date of death as Gilbert White so the creation is the complete opposite of the pious, unmarried and highly educated Gilbert White. Well, we're uh, going to leave the village now and start the sort of second leg of the walk, the uh, northern uh, part of the loop. So I've got the church on my right and we're just about to go into this quite alluring meadow called Church Meadow on my left. Isn't that beautiful? The <laughs> full of buttercups glinting away in this glorious morning sunshine. The birds tweetering away and right at the bottom there's a, a little stream and some benches. What a peaceful place to be.
a good place to have a cool down on a hot day like today. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there are no fish in this one, fella. You gonna come along this way? Yeah. Good boy. We're well, making our way along the side of a couple of bits of woodland. Um, short lith and long lith. Lith is Saxon for steep slope, I believe. And we're actually on the um, Hangers Way long distance footpath, which is a, a 21 mile route from Alton down to the Queen Elizabeth Country Park. In fact, we um, walked a little bit of it on our um, video walk at uh, Berriton. But just along here, another glorious green valley full of uh, lush vegetation. A lot of this um, that wild pink flower, um, red campion, I think it is. And then down in the this valley, there's a, a little stream. It's actually a, a river, uh, very much um, in the early stages of one. It's called the Oak Hanger Stream. Uh, it's a tributary of the River Slee, that's S-L-E-A, which uh, that in turn flows into the River Way and then into the River Thames. Its source is just to the south uh, from here. It's a place called Well Head, um, just near uh, the Zigzag Path. So it's only about uh, five miles long before it joins the, the Slee. So we're going to continue walking along the top of this valley. In fact, we will, on the return leg, be coming along a path that goes through the woods over there on the way back. Well, this is certainly worthy of a wow. Just come out of Long Lith and uh, been met by this quite incredible view. It's a meadow and there are, I think there are three lakes here. Interesting, if you look at a map of uh, around about the 1900s, the, the lakes don't appear on there. In fact, I couldn't see it on a 1961 map, so I wonder if they're fairly recent, um, they've been made for fishing. I don't know. <laughs> I might be talking absolute rubbish, but they're beautiful nevertheless. <laughs> Just been speaking to a, a lovely lady who's a local here was telling me a little bit more history about these lakes. There were um, fish ponds here many uh, centuries ago, part of uh, an abbey that wasn't too far away from here, but um, they were long lost in time, so that's why they don't appear on any maps. And sure enough, they were sort of reinstated around about 20 years ago, and uh, they are stocked with fish now. I don't know if this is going to come across on the uh, the GoPro, but there's a beautiful, almost looks like a koi carp with orange and white swimming about, getting very close to the surface from time to time. Quite exquisite uh, colouring. Keeps coming up to the top and then diving down again. <laughs> come on, show yourself again. It's obviously very shy. Well, we've just made our way across another beautiful meadow. Glorious sunshine now. We've just stopped for a water break. Logan's got his own little water bowl. Now we're about as far north as we're going to go uh, on the, the walk. In fact, if I just start to, to pan round, uh, you can see a farm just over my shoulder here. That's called uh, Priory Farm, I believe. And there was indeed a priory here many, many centuries ago um, called Selborne Priory, founded in 1233, but disestablished in 1486. It wasn't uh, viable as there were no cannons in residence at the time. Now there's no visible remains of the buildings at all above ground. Um, some archaeological investigations 
took place in the 60s and 70s and they found evidence of a church, cloisters and other buildings but all the original buildings have long since been demolished and stone used uh, locally. Now we're going to go through this little bit quite quickly because I read somewhere that there's a ghost of a black Labrador that stalks Priory Lane. I'm okay but uh, Logan wasn't so keen when he heard about that. Well, we're very much on the homeward leg now, heading back towards the uh, village and uh, we'll shortly be going through some uh, woods and we'll get some shade there. And we're going to be following actually an old ancient track that was used by the monks to get from the, the Priory to uh, Selborne. I think it was called the Via Canonorum. Well folks, we've made it to our final destination, the Museum Tea Gardens for a cup of tea, a sausage roll, and I've picked up a bottle of zigzag ale, 6.3%. That should keep me a little bit happy later on. Well folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We thought we'd do our end piece here at the top of zigzag path right by the wishing stone. We hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment. And as I always say, if you haven't already done so, please uh, do subscribe. That way, hopefully, you'll be able to join us for another walk sometime in the future. And do check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. We've had a super walk today. The weather's been wonderful again, but uh, as I said right at the beginning, I think this is one of my favourite walks in the countryside in Hampshire. It really was quite spectacular in places. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio.